Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for The Mutilator, which is a 1984 film. And uh, it's currently, when I'm recording this, uh, available for streaming on the Shudder Horror Movie and Show streaming service. Uh, that's actually where I get a lot of my reviews from. And part of the reason being I'm in a uh, horror group on Facebook that is, I think it's called uh, Joe Bob Briggs Driving Mutants. I think that's the actual name of it. But it's basically people who really like Joe Bob Briggs and like Shudder. And so... I do polls on there, and this was a winner of the poll. Uh, I kind of see why being a kind of like Joe Bob Briggs fan group. And um, as I talk about it more, you'll kind of understand. So first off, this movie's terrible. This movie is, is awful. It's, an, it's not to be really taken seriously at all. Um, I know I, I had uh, had some people who commented on the poll and had kind of said, oh, it's greatly under, underappreciated. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe this is going to be some like diamond in the rough, some gem that people don't really talk about often that is really amazing because those are out there. And then, then I started watching it and I was like, oh, it's one of these. It's a terrible movie, but it does fall into the category, I think, of a terrible fun movie. Uh, you have like terrible, terrible movies and terrible fun movies. And this is kind of a terrible fun movie. It's not like the best. It's not like something like The Stuff where like The Stuff by Larry Cohen isn't like it's it's kind of like an in-between type thing where it's like it's it's bad, like story wise and ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. This one, the story's not good at all. It's mainly just about the kills, to be honest, and that's what makes it actually fun. And being able to kind of laugh at how bad the acting is as well. So let me go over this a little bit. I looked into a little bit of the um, kind of behind the scenes, like how this film came to be, uh, and some things people had said about it way back. So once again, keep in mind this is 1984. A lot of people were just like pumping out movies at that time and money was pretty free flowing, especially for horror back then. Um, so the movie was originally called Fall Break, not the mutilator, Fall Break. And obviously it had to do with some college kids on fall break and then they get killed. That's not really spoilers because... It's a horror movie, and it's in the description of it. So the MPAA actually gave it an X rating, which after I watched it, I was just like, an X rating? Unless I've seen, I was seeing like an edited version on Shutter, but I would think it's a, a non-edited version, um, being in 2019 right now. But I was like, how is it an X rating? Like there was nudity in it, but it wasn't crazy. I guess maybe it was a combination of the nudity plus the gore and the practical effects which that's kind of the thing about this movie. It is a terrible movie, and the acting is like some of the worst I've seen in film, but the gore and the practical effects and the kill scenes are actually quite good. And when you look at how bad the movie actually is versus how good the kills and gore and practical effects are, it's kind of mind-boggling. And it, it, the movie had a budget of about a million dollars. It was kind of where I found it online. It was like estimate about a million dollars. Uh, so I was like, all the money must have gone towards like the gore effects, basically. Um, because you see that. Like, that's what it looks like. And I was, I mean, if for nothing else, I would recommend people see this movie for the kill scenes. Because they are impressive for how bad the movie is, to be honest. So Tom Savini apparently has praised the movie just for the kills and the gore. Um, and he says that's actually the reason to see the movie, basically. And I think that's interesting coming from him because he did a, he I believe he had done the practical and like gore effects for a movie back in the 80s called The Prowler. And uh, it feels similar to me. The Prowler was a bad movie. The story was terrible. The acting wasn't very good. Although I do think the acting is better than The Mutilator but still not very good, and just like a boring, not good movie, but the the kills and the gore and the practical effects were really good, so it's kind of interesting that Tom Savini is saying that about The Mutilator, because it's very much like The Prowler, so, and I will say, I do need to say, that The Mutilator feels to me like a movie that should get the Joe Bob Briggs treatment, and I would think that it probably could, because he's had movies like this. He actually did a, um, a episode for during one of his marathons on the Shutter streaming service, he did one for The Prowler. So they're kind of like two peas in a pod, and I think should do The Mutilator. 
So right off the bat, the acting in this is atrocious, I wrote down. It is like crazy bad. You won't believe how bad it is. In addition to the kills and practical effects, you should see it for how bad the acting is, I guess. Just to believe it, you know. Uh, there's no dialogue, really, in the beginning, when there clearly should be dialogue. Um, there, there's something that they open up with, a scene where things are happening, and you're just like, how is nobody speaking right now? Uh, and it, it, it just boggles my mind. It's terrible script writing. It's terrible filmmaking. But you're just like, how did they go through this and think everyone should be silent? No one should say a certain thing. It's weird. It is weird. It is awful. And you're just like, what the hell? Uh, so the beginning of this actually reminded me of a few other films that I've seen. Actually, both movies that Joe Bob Briggs has given his treatment to. Uh, pieces, the beginning of Pieces seemed kind of similar, and the beginning of Blood Rage, uh, those types of films. Um, actually, a little bit sleep Sleepaway Camp as well, like a, a slight bit Sleepaway Camp. So um, if you've seen those, you'll kind of look, like understand the com commonality of how they open up, so you'll know what I'm talking about. So there's the reason, I, I wrote down, there's a reason that the guy who wrote and directed this, Buddy Cooper, there's a reason he only made one film. His IMDb credits are not extensive at all. Very, very small. The only actual film he made is The Mutilator, a.k.a. Fall Break. And you can see why. I'm sure after seeing this, nobody wanted to bankroll this guy. Everyone was like, mm, we'll pass. No thanks. Although, nowadays, with people kind of like liking bad movies now, I think it might be cool if Buddy Cooper's still alive, if someone found him in like, you want to make a mutil Mutilator 2 or you want to make another film kind of bad like this, here's some money. Do it. Because it could make money. I really think it could. The theme song for this is horrendous. It kind of reminded me of like a buddy comedy sitcom from the 80s theme song. Um, and it just doesn't fit for a horror film at all. And it's so 80s and ridiculous. Like, it even has one of those, like, kind of long saxophone solos. Do you guys remember saxophone solos in music? I actually was saying, like, a year or two ago, I was just like, whatever happened to saxophone solos? And, it, you know, when I think about it, like, solos in general have just kind of disappeared from music. Here, you know, here and there you'll hear it, but, like, guitar solos are, have always been classic and amazing. But saxophone solos were actually kind of cool for a bit, and I think it'd be funny if we brought them back. I don't know. But there's a there's a saxophone solo in the intro theme song for The Mutilator, and it's it's weird. The song's so bad. Uh, so the, the, the characters in there are supposed to be college age, and one, one of the dudes looks like he's in his 40s. <laughs> so that just kind of like adds to the comedic aspect for me personally. I find myself actually laughing when I'm looking at these people and I'm like, okay, so first of all, almost all of them look like they're easily in their mid mid to late 20s. Like one of the guys looks like he's maybe in his early 30s, but the one dude looks like he could easily be in his early 40s. And I was just like, that is crazy. Um, uh, this guy thinks, okay, so I note to myself. So the main character in it is very kind of like blasé about a lot of stuff, uh, including the fact that his father is like a crazy raging alcoholic. And, and he's just like, it's it was just so crazy to me where he's just like, he like, is just like, uh, you know, like thinks his dad's alcoholism is funny. And it's just like, goes back to the terrible script writing. It's like, who writes this? Who thinks this is how a movie should go and how dialogue should be and how characters should be? It's crazy. Um, they did have a very nice beach setting. The, the, the setting of, you know, they go to a beach house. Um, it's cool. Like, you see the beach. You see the waves. You see the sand. And, and, like, beach houses have, like, a cool, interesting look to them. And I feel like they did utilize the beach house to a decent degree. So that's kind of cool. So you see a lot of it, which I enjoy. But also, um, <laughs> because of that, and it's, very like, a very small set... Uh, there are a lot of times where the killer is kind of like sneaking around and you're like, people definitely should have seen him sneaking around. Like there are all these uh, situations where it's like it's timed exactly right so that someone will like not necessarily actually happens. But an example, like someone will like turn their back at exactly the right time that like the killer walks behind them or something and they don't happen to like hear footsteps or anything. And you're just like. And there are numerous moments of that where you're just like, they definitely would have seen this guy. 
he wouldn't be able to as silently just get through. It, it just adds to how bad it is. There's a lot of dumb hijinks in this too, uh, where I, I know they were the, the, with the writing they were trying to go with, oh, these are college kids. They like to joke around and have fun and be playful, but it seemed way more juvenile than the, than that. Like none of their like messing around and, and, uh, and having fun felt college at all. It felt very like middle school or like early high school. And it's just like, that's, it's weird. It didn't land. It felt out of place. It got very annoying because they did it a lot. And you're just like, okay, can we have a little bit of substance to this, please? Just maybe a little bit. But that's not the type of movie this is, as I learned. Um, yeah, I wrote down as bad as this filmmaking is, the kills are surprisingly well done. Like I said, I cannot reiterate that enough. That is the reason to see this plus just to believe how bad the acting and script writing is. Um, there are the, okay, the lurking around thing, I already got that. And then the, actually the killer's final scene, the final, final scene with the killer in it is a really cool looking shot, to be honest, which really caught me off guard because overall this film obviously is not very well done. So when that final like killer scene happens, that final shot, I was like, oh, that actually, that looks really good. It was like this one little inspired moment from Buddy Cooper. He's just like, oh, this is going to look so good. And that's like the only time he said that on set, I'm sure. Well, maybe he said it more, but he was wrong. But um, there, are, the kill. I in addition to the kills looking good with this, I, I'd say the kill ideas are actually solid in it, especially for 1984. So, yeah, uh, that's my summation of it. So, I come to a hard moment where I always do like five star rating with half stars in play, and I usually rate them all uh, the films as like you know on like an overall film scale. But the problem with this one is that I feel like it can't be rated as a normal film because it's just terrible. So I'll, I'll throw out two ratings, I guess. The first one is, like, as an actual film, how is this rated? I'm going to give it one star. And it gets the one star because of the... I would give it a half, because I'm, I'm not going to give zero stars for anything, but I would give it a half except for how the kills are. So that would be a one star. Now, if I'm rating it as far as, like, bad movies go, like fun bad movies... I would give it a three and I would give it a two and a half as far as bad movies go, but I would give it that extra half bump because of the kills. So I would give it a three as a bad fun movie to watch and I give it a one as an actual movie. So uh, yeah, there are my ratings on it. So thank you everyone for checking this out. Uh, I'm glad I saw this movie. It was kind of a joy. I like seeing bad films that are kind of like fun, bad films. So uh, this was a good time. Uh, I, I would love to see more of these. Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Please put some comments down there. Have you seen The Mutilator? I'd love to hear some other people's opinions on it. Uh, also, really do me a favor. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, I really appreciate it. But also spread the word. If you know people who like movie reviews, point them in this direction because I want to keep doing it. And when people hit that subscribe, it really motivates me to keep it going and do some more cool stuff. So anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out once again. Until next time, keep it brutal.